Welcome. We're talking about the nervous system today. We've been talking about this in lecture and now we're going to do some drawing and sort of cement some of the concepts in our minds. So let's take a look at the document camera here and briefly take a look at this uh, basic unit of the nervous system. Most neurons have the same basic structure and they consist of three parts. The nerve cell body here, dendrites that receive sensory information, and an axon that leads away from the nerve cell body. So with that, let's take a, a chance here to draw this. So we have the large structure, this nerve cell body, where you find the nucleus of the neuron. There are processes coming off of the nerve cell body. And these are called dendrites, which also means tree. And these dendrites are receiving sensory information and they are transmitting it towards the nerve cell body. There's another process coming off of the nerve cell body and this is called the axon. The axons are single, long cytoplasmic extensions that conduct impulses away from the nerve cell body. Along the axon, there are structures. That shield and protect the axon. And this is called a myelin sheath. And these myelin sheaths are produced by glial cells or supporting cells. And in particular, in the peripheral nervous system, these myelin sheaths are produced by Schwann cells. And again, this is in the peripheral nervous system. Other glial cells or those supporting cells that protect and provide support for the neurons of the nervous system. Other cells include oligodendrocytes which produce the myelin sheaths on the axons in the central nervous system and also found in the central nervous system are astrocytes. And astrocytes are neuroglial cells that facilitate nutrient transfers in our ion reservoirs, again, within that central nervous system. So this is a neuron, and it is the basic unit of the nervous system. From here, Let's talk a little bit about how the nervous system is divided into the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. And with that, let's go to this drawing within our textbook. Let's bring it in a little bit and up to show the different components here. So along the top, this is the peripheral nervous system composed of sensory neurons and motor neurons. You have sensory receptors that are found externally as well as internally and these are what senses the information transmits 
to the dendrites and go along to the nerve cell body and then away on it via an axon into the central nervous system where you find interneurons. Dendrites receive the information, take it to the nerve cell body where it is integrated and interpreted. Information is sent away from the central nervous system via the axons, are received by dendrites of motor neurons, taken along to the nerve cell body, and then back out to motor effectors. So motor effectors are the muscles and the glands that are going to actually mitigate a response to the original information that was sensed by those receptors. Another way of looking at the differences between the peripheral and the sensory nervous, the central nervous system is via this diagram. So you have sensory ne neurons that are registering internal stimuli, sensory neurons that are registering external stimuli, taking these via the sensory pathway to the central nervous system, to those interneurons found within the brain and the spinal cord. The information is integrated and then a response is sent out via the motor pathway. Within this pathway, the information can go along via the somatic nervous system, the voluntary nervous system that's going to skeletal muscles and are affecting response, or it can go via the autonomic nervous system, the involuntary system that innervates smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. This autonomic nervous system can be broken into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the one that is responsible for a fight or flight response. And the parasympathetic nervous system is what is being used during a rest and repose system. And with that, we will stop here and we will come back in another segment and look at how the nervous impulse is actually transmitted. Thank you.